That's just, I just believe that. I, I believe that I can create whatever I want to create. If I can put, put my head on it right, study it, learn the patterns, and, you know, I just, I, it's, it's hard to put into words, yeah. real metaphysical, esoteric nonsense, but I feel very strongly that we are who we choose to be. The only thing that I see that is distinctly different about me is I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill, right? I will run. You would not be outworked. I will not be, be out, yeah. outworked, Right. period. Yeah. You know, you might have more talent than me. You might be smarter than me. You might be sexier than me. You might be all of those things. You got it on me in nine categories. But if we get on the treadmill together, <laughs> right? There's two things. You're getting off first yeah. or I'm gonna die. It's really that simple, right? So let's go back to the question about what if people block me out? It's, it's gonna be two options. Yeah. I'm gonna get back in or I'm gonna be dead, yeah. right? It's like, you're not going to outwork me. It's, it's, a, it's a very, it's such a simple, basic concept. It's the, the guy who is willing to hustle the most is going to be the guy that just gets that loose ball. You know, he's, oh, he got the, oh, he got the, oh, okay, he got two. He got, ooh, God, he hustled, he grabbed that one. That was going to be out of bounds, but he saved it yeah. uh, back in. It's like the commodity that I see the majority of people who aren't getting the places they want or aren't achieving the things that, that they want in this business is strictly based on hustle. It's strictly based on being outworked. It's strictly based on missing crucial opportunities. People get this one wrong, I think, from college. And it's that if you have a set amount of time to dedicate to any sort of learning endeavor, you are much better off spending that time a little bit every day than you are in one batched process. There's some things in life that do better in batching. Learning is not one of them because learning comes from repetition, right? I see people in college, they go, but wait a second, I crammed for my last test, I did fine, eight hours straight, I studied. Yes, but how much did you remember three days later? If you're trying to build a skill, you're trying to rewire your brain, create new neural pathways, say you're playing the piano. If you sit down for three hours and play, 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 and then come back a week later, you're not gonna have it. But if you sit down for a half hour a day, walk away, come back the next day, half hour, you're getting to review what you did in a much shorter time span. That's going to help you learn faster. So keep in mind, when you have something, this consistency every single day, with the exception of things that require rest, like weight training, you wanna keep that up. Now, a couple of caveats here. First thing is this takes much more willpower. It's a lot easier for people to go, I'm gonna run really hard for one day than it is to do it for a year, a little bit every day. So if you're working on willpower, you haven't mastered that, check out our video on willpower. It's gonna help you with that. And the second thing is that this is true of learning and practicing, though not necessarily of production. I'm a writer. And if you're learning to write, I recommend you read and write every day. But if you're writing your masterpiece, some people, myself included, do better to have these just complete flow experiences of six hours at a time. You write, 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 walk away for a week and then come back to it. So learning and production, not necessarily the same mechanics going on here. If you configure your life so that what you are genuinely doing is aiming at the highest possible good, then the things that you need to, to survive and to thrive on a day-to-day -day basis will deliver themselves to you. That's a hypothesis, and it's not some simple hypothesis, right? Because it, what it basically says is, if you dare to do the most difficult thing that you can conceptualize, your life will work out better than it will if you do anything else. Well, how are you going to find out if that's true? Well, it's a Kierkegaardian leap of faith. There's no way you're going to find out whether or not that's true unless you do it. So no one, no one can tell you either, because just because it works for someone else, I mean, that's interesting and all that, but it's no proof that it'll work for you. You have to be all in in this game. There is no more effective way of operating in the world than to conceptualize the highest good that you can and then strive to attain it. There's no more practical pathway to the kind of success that you could have if you actually knew what success was. The world shifts itself around your aim because you're, you're a creature that has an aim. 
You have to have an aim in order to do something. You're an aiming creature. You look at a point and you move towards it. It's built right into you. And so you have an aim. Well, let's say your aim is the highest possible aim. Well, then, so that sets up the world around you. It, it organizes all of your perceptions. It organizes what you see and you don't see. It organizes your emotions and your motivations. So you organize yourself around that aim. And then what happens is the day manifests itself as a set of challenges and problems. And if you solve them properly, then you stay on the pathway towards that aim. And you can concentrate on the, on the, on the day. And so that way you get to have your cake and eat it too, because you can, you can point into the distance, the far distance, and you can live in the day. And it seems to me that that's, that makes every moment of the day supercharged with meaning. That, that's how, because if everything that you're doing every day is related to the highest possible aim that you can conceptualize, well, that's the very definition of the meaning that would sustain you in your life. Really, the secret's all learning and the secret's all study. It's so, so simple. You want to know the secret? It's really this. Learning equals repetition. It's just repetition. That's all learning is. People think that, well, oh, I'm not as smart as this guy. I'm not as smart as that guy. <laughs> There's little smarts that are actually required for learning. Learning is really dumb. Learning is just repetition, brute force repetition, again and again and again and again and again. If you repeat something enough times, your brain is gonna learn it no matter what, even if you're the worst student. This was the key thing that I discovered Early in 10th grade, I discovered this, right when my results just totally skyrocketed with my grades and my studying habits and everything. Because I discovered really this one secret to all of learning. It's just repetition. I literally discovered that my brain can learn anything. I can memorize anything, any quantity of things, uh, any complexity of things I can memorize just through study. And now uh, study is not uh, something that you just do to memorize stuff. So it's not about memorization. To me, I don't really care about memorizing things. That's not important. But what is important is, first of all, you are tested on a lot of memorization skills in school. So that's just part of the school system, as imperfect as it is. So that will help you with getting amazing grades. Uh, but also, when you do repeat stuff over and over and over again, what happens is that, yes, you memorize stuff, but also you get these deeper interconnections your mind starts connecting the dots and it does all this stuff mostly unconsciously. You're not consciously sitting there and coming up with really like crafty, clever techniques and ideas. What's happening is that you're just immersing yourself in the field of study and you're repeating things again and again and again and again and again and your mind just can't help making those interconnections for you and that process is actually really uh, enjoyable. You can be a history maker or you can be liked by everyone around you, you can't be both. I mean, the very nature of living your personal greatness and doing something otherworldly in our world of ours means you're gonna to have to think differently from the majority. You're gonna to have to install the habits and routines that most people don't do. You're gonna to have to live, talk, breathe, walk, work, produce, create in a way that most people who are card-carrying members of the cult of mediocrity just don't buy into. When you look at most people out on the world today, and this is not judging, this is just reporting, but they're addicted to entertainment, they love gossiping, they're negative, they're toxic. Anyone who wants to do anything great, they want to bring them down, they dismiss the game changers, and they're just coasting through life. And so the very nature of you stepping up your game, living your greatest potential, owning your craft, dominating your field, and living a life that's legendary means you're going to have to leave the 5% and make a decision to live as very few people do. And what does that mean? It means you're going to be laughed at. It means you're going to be ridiculed. It means you're going to be misunderstood because leadership is a lonely sport. First of all, I prioritize sleep. And that means making, that means saying no to things you want to do. It's not easy. Like no, it's you, hard. I think the know. hardest thing. Yeah. Last night, um, you know, Michelle Sandberg interviewed me at the Summer School Symphony Hall. And uh, then I had to sign books. And I would have loved to go and have dinner with her. But I went to bed. And 
you know, because if I hadn't got, if I had gone out to dinner and hadn't got my at least seven hours sleep that I need and had to get up early to do TV, I would not be enjoying being here with you now. And I'm really enjoying it. And I'm 100% present. And I'm not tired. And I hate being tired more than I hate anything. I honestly, I honestly believe that if you're, if you're focused and passionate and driven, um, you can achieve anything you want to achieve in life. Because I honestly believe that. Because you'll figure it out. You know what I mean?